In this lecture, I'm going to show you that how you can improve the performance of your application by reducing and minimizing the network calls. Now, if you go to the story list view, you can see that we are building a list. Inside the list, we have a navigation link. And inside the navigation link, the destination is actually going to story details view, where we are simply passing the story ID. Let's go ahead and check out story detail view. The story detail view initializer simply takes in the story ID and then it creates an instance of story detail view model. Once it creates a story detail view model, if you go to the story detail view model, it not only assigns the ID to the story ID property, but it also starts making the request. Now, if you go ahead and put some over here, let's say story or about to make a network request, then you will realize that this particular line will be executed multiple times because it is inside the story list view and inside a list in a loop. Now, if I go ahead and run this, you will see that it will be printed many number of times. This means that you are actually making these all requests. This is not a good idea to make so many different requests and I'm not even on that particular page or a particular article. So why is it trying to make all these requests and fetching all the articles when I'm not even over there? So let's go ahead and see that how we can reduce this or how we can remove these calls. We know that these calls are coming from story details view model because when we initialize the story details view model, we are making the request right inside the initializer. So let's go ahead and move these calls into a separate function. We'll call it fetch story details. We will take in the story ID, which will be of type integer. And we can actually pass this one, all of this, into the next function. There we go. Now in this case, you might be wondering, do we even need to pass in the story ID, like the one that we have passed in? Well, the one that we have passed in, we are simply storing it in a property. And once it is stored in the property, we can remove it from the fetch story details and use the story ID. Perfect. Let's go ahead and build that. Now, obviously, if you run the application, you will see that it's not going to make the request and it's not going to get you the story details because we are not even calling that function. Let's go ahead and run this and see that if we actually make that particular request. Then let's make sure that we are putting this line inside fetch story details. And you will now find out that we are not making any network requests. So this is always good. But obviously, if I select any of these stories, it's just going to say it's not available. So the question is, where and how should we fetch our stories? So let's go ahead and go to our story detail view. You can see that we are initializing inside the initializer for the story detail view component. Now we can actually go ahead and use something called on appear. And right inside on appear, we can actually go ahead and make a request. Story details dot fetch self dot story detail dot and let's see that what that particular thing is is called fetch story details well let's make sure that you it's not a private function so we have removed that and now it's going to show up there we go let's go ahead and build that the other thing we need to do is we need to pass in the id we don't have access to the id over here in the story details so we can go ahead and create something called a story ID and we can initialize it right here self dot story ID equals to story ID. 
we can actually pass the story ID over here and we can go ahead and pass it by saying story ID. Now if you're passing the story ID over here, then the question is that do we even need a story ID at that particular moment when we are creating an instance of story detail? And the answer is most probably that we don't need that. Let's go to the story detail view model. Remove the story ID from here. We don't need that. Remove the story ID. Remove the story ID from everywhere. Update your fetch story details so that it has story ID. And now we can use that story ID. Let's go ahead and build that. Great. So now our initializer has nothing. We can even remove it if you want to. And we have a fetch story details, which takes in a story ID, performs a network request. Once the request comes back, it gives the story, assigns the story to the story property, which publishes the event. And the story detail view gets re-rendered once again. Let's go ahead and try it out. I'm going to go ahead and run the application. And I'm going to go and click on any of these stories. Okay, so this part is working fine. It is able to fetch the story, but it again says page not found. And even though I'm clicking on a particular story, it's always saying page not found. Now we do get the URL because we are passing the URL to our web view, but there is definitely something wrong with our web view because it's not able to update itself. If you go ahead and check out the web view, you can see that we haven't really done anything with the actual update UI view function. So over here, what we can do is we can first of all get the URL. So URL string self.url. If the URL is incorrect, then we are not going to do anything. Else, we are going to go ahead and create a request which is URL request URL, passing in the URL. And then we can go ahead and say UI view dot load a particular request, which we have. And let's go ahead and build our application. So what we're doing is that once you provide the updated property, updated URL, the update UI view function is going to get executed and it's going to allow us to reflect the latest changes in our web view. Let's go ahead and run this. And let's go ahead and click on the first one. So you can see the title being displayed and here we go. The actual article is also being displayed. And if you look over here in the network, you're only making one network call to the article that you just got selected. Let's go back, select some other article. Some articles you'll see that it's not uh, pulling up. Maybe the URL is nil or something. But again, you can see that it was actually able to pull the single article and we had to only make one single request and instead of making hundreds of requests. 